Newt Gingrich. First he was, then wasn't, then was now. Well, now he could be the man at the moment. Ronald Reagan biographer Craig Shirley is currently writing the Newt Gingrich biography, which must be fascinating at this stage. And he, he joins us from Washington, D.C. Welcome to you, sir. Michael, how are you? I, I'm well. Now, I was chatting with uh, Charles Moore just last week when I was in London. We had breakfast. He, he wrote the authorized biography of Margaret Thatcher, and that's to be published yes. uh, only after she dies, actually. So, so the first volume's all ready to go. I assume you must have a lot written, and you're waiting to see what happens in the, in the next few months. Yeah, I do. Uh, I, Michael, I, I started out several years ago working on this, and it was really originally supposed to be about his early political life from uh, uh, 73 and then culminating with the 94 takeover of Congress. But as his political fortunes uh, went up and down and up mm -hmm. and down and now up again, the publisher said, well, let's see where this goes. So I, I'm traveling with him and writing about the campaign and kind of folding that into the existing book. Mm -hmm. He and his people, are they surprised? I certainly am at how well he's doing now. I was with him on the day of the uh, South Carolina primary. I traveled for the day on the uh, bus. Mm. Um, and they were, the staff was, and he, were very oddly very calm about it, I thought. Uh, but he did break into a big grin and start taking phone calls when uh, the uh, AP uh, projection started coming in the uh, late afternoon. And then the CNN and, uh, and, and Fox and other projections came in that eventually said, said that he was going to win South Carolina. Uh, but uh, they, they all took it very, very much in stride. And I think it's because they've been there through so many ups and downs in this campaign for ever since, you know, the consultants left last uh, spring. And they've been through a dozen peaks and valleys. So I think that explains it. Yeah. It seemed to me a major turning point, particularly with the grassroots of the conservative or Republican movement, was when he, he attacked the, the, the elite media, the liberal media, when they were attacking him about right. the so-called open marriage. He did that extremely well. He did do that extremely well, but I think it's even deeper than that, Michael. There is The Republican Party is essentially bipolar, and it has been going back to the time of Dwight Eisenhower and Robert Taft. There is the populist, Reaganite, conservative wing or, or base of the party, and then there's the elitist country club, Bush, Romney, Nelson Rockefeller part of the Republican Party, and yeah. they have been at loggerheads for 50 years. Mm. And Gingrich represents that, yeah. that kind of that blue-collar Reagan Democrat, and Romney represents the moneyed power elites. Right. Now, now Santorum, though, also very much represents that blue-collar uh, Catholic yes. immigrant. Where does he stand on Gingrich? Surely he must realize that, that, that his constituency is not going to be his long term. It will go to Newt. Well, he's, uh, he's playing the, the only strategy he can right now. Sen what Senator Santorum is counting on or, or is hoping for is that if he hangs around long enough and Gingrich makes a mistake and, they, and it runs out of money or for whatever reason he can't continue the race, there's still that 70 percent of the Republican Party that just can't bring itself to support Mitt Romney and wants to go someplace. So Santorum is kind of hanging around waiting in case, uh, uh, you know, uh, the Gingrich campaign implodes. Yeah. Again, there's been a bit of a change. When we spoke a couple of months ago, a lot of Republicans thought, they were surprised, but they actually thought, you know, we can win this time round. We can beat him. That's yes. changed now. I'm speaking to people in New York and Washington, conservatives, they're saying, you know, whoever we get here, Barack Obama's going to win this one. Well, Republican consultants in, uh, in, in Washington uh, tend to be kind of dull, not very imaginative and smart people, by, by and large. And I know because I've <laughs> talked to them for uh, 30 years. Uh, uh, they look at things, the world static instead of dynamic, and they don't think that, gee, maybe the economy will change radically between now and, say, October uh, of uh, 2012, and that uh, if unemployment is falling and uh, the world is uh, relatively at peace and there's growing prosperity, that, gee, maybe presidents like to keep incumbent presidents in office. They always think for the moment. They, they, never, they always think tactically instead of strategically. The odds are is that, it, based on, you know, 44 presidents, is, is that Barack Obama will be reelected uh, in November 2012. It's just that American people do not like to throw presidents out of office unless the uh, circumstances are extraordinary. Mm -hmm. In terms of money, Romney pretty much has as much money, I suppose, as he wants. And then so many people behind sure. him who are very wealthy. $57,000 a day. Wow. Is there a point, though? Well, that's, his, that's, that's his personal income off of his uh, dividend investments. Quite incredible. Is there a point yeah. at which Gingrich simply can't keep up financially? 
Well, if it's just about money, Michael, yes. But these things are about more than money. They're about message and where you stand for. Sure. Uh, I can cite many races in the past, Reagan, John McCain, others, who didn't have the money to keep up with their, with their wealthier opponents, uh, but had a better message and were therefore able to eventually become the nominee. Yeah. So the, it, it, this is great stuff. We, we've got to have you back because we have not seen nowhere near the last, actually, of this. It's, it's ongoing. So we'll have you back. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you, Michael.